greeting to my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Give honor to the one and only Almighty Yahweh. Yes. For his goodness, for his kindness, and for the multitudes of his tender and compassion. We thank Yahweh for this day, not a day we've never seen or felt before. We praise him for life, health, and strength. For he alone is worthy of all praise in our lives. Hallelujah. We bring you greetings from the Refugee Center of Yahweh, located in North of Virginia, 2808 Bradley Street. We praise Yahweh for his work and for the memory and legacy of our founder and established military in the late Bishop E.W. Woodbury Sr. Bless him. We praise Yahweh for our mother. Yes. For Yahweh has allowed us to still be with us. And we praise Yahweh for her presence today. Hallelujah. In the body of the Messiah. We want you to pray today for us. Yahweh will lead us here in certain gear here too. Yes. Our petitions and supplications. Amen. Love this. Let's approach the throne of favor today and ask Yahweh for help in the time of need. Yes. Father, we thank you for this another day that you allowed us to see. We praise you for life, health, we praise you for the activity of limbs and muscles and for the dust and running warm in our veins. Yes, sir. We thank you for our last night's sleep and early rise this morning. Father, thank you for those who pressed their way out today to be thank you. in the call. Touch them and strengthen them right now. Bless them right now in the name of Yeshua and Mashiach. Move by your power and by your spirit. Let's go right there, Yahweh, Father, who are there to affliction. Pray that you will send <coughs> your ministering angels by to give charge over them right now. Thank you. Send the spirit of Rafika in, hallelujah. Move by your power, by your spirit. Let your blood prevail in your name be praised and edified today, hallelujah. We thank you, Yahweh, for who you are, for what you are. We realize there's nothing too hard for you to do. Today we come to the throne boldly to ask for help in the time of need. Those right now, Father, who are discouraged, destroyed, have the mind to give up, stand by right now, Yahweh, and be with them. Yes, sir. Encourage their hearts right now, open their eyes of their understanding. That it may be enlightened according to the grand word of your truth. Move by your power and by your spirit right now, Father. Thank you for this day. For this is the day you made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We give you praise. We lift you up. We edify. Thank you for your Sunday short coming to die that we might have a right to the tree of life. Yes. Thank you for sending the Ruach HaKadosh, Yahweh, that spirit, that comfort that your son promised, Yahweh, that you sent for the day of Pentecost. Bless you. And came to rest with us, to abode with us, to lead us and guide us into all truth. We praise your name. We we'll give you praise and honor that more. Thank you, Father.
There's a peace that comes to go. Though our hearts and flesh may fail, there's an anchor for our soul. We can sing if we
my wings. Thank you, Yahweh, for all the selections today. And we praise him for you and for your presence today. We certainly request your prayers. Yahweh will certainly meet us here today and to shower down blessings upon us. For it is Yahweh who has given us the strength to persevere and to continue moving forward, beloved. We got so much to give him praise for, for he's worthy of all praise and all honor. Today I'm not going to be lengthy, but I thank Yahweh for another opportunity to stand today and to thank him for you and for your your attendance. We praise Yahweh for the Zoom service participants who are viewing today. Praise Yahweh for you. We ask Yahweh to continue to strengthen you and to bless you. Ask that you would pray for Pastor E today. And Yahweh will certainly give us a word to share with you. Beloved, as I meditated this week on various different passages of Scripture, I, for whatever reason, cannot get away from the culminating events that are taking place in society. (laughs) And as I view the business of church, And I refer to it as the business of church going on campaigns to solicit funds and offerings to support various ministries. Then I think about the, the product that you're getting for what you're supporting. And the different defects in the product. <laughs> oh, you, you know, merchandise is <coughs> something all of us take pride in. Oh yeah. 
And somebody said, you get what you pay for. Mm-hmm. And there's a time when I thought about it, I said, well, you know, if you're paying for something that you want to hear, then you expect the presenter to do a good job of it. I am reminded that the word of Yahweh is unchangeable. All right. But what has occurred, my my brothers and sisters, (coughs) somebody chose to forget the passage over in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. which states, Yahshua HaMashiach, the same yesterday and today and forever. All right. You know, Yahshua is the same yesterday, yes. today, and forever. Hallelujah. And you and me, brothers and sisters, we can take, we can take heart in this and have confidence in Yahshua. You know, unlike our own wealth or earthly leaders, which we see every day, aspiring and still grabbing at more and more, these same individuals are the same ones, are the same ones who will disappoint and constantly change with the times. Oh, yeah. Yahshua is the one who is steadfast, unchanging. He's an anchor that we can hold on to for the rest of our lives. Amen. Amen. The same yesterday, the day, and forever. All right. <clears throat> Malachi 3 6. Sort of put it this way. For I am Yahweh. I change not. All right. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, you're not consumed. Amen. There is much to be learned from the old covenant. Yeremiah speaks to us today from chapter 6 and verse 16. And it says on this wise, thus saith Yahweh, stand. Stand ye in the ways. And see and ask for the old paths. All right. Where is the good way? And walk therein. And ye shall find rest for your souls. But, but, they said, we will not walk therein. This mindset of telling Yahweh what you won't do mm-hmm. is not something that's new. It is It is an attitude and a mindset and a state of arrogance that man has been plagued with since the beginning of time. Today, the scripture says if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. That's right. You know, as in the day of provocation. And when you think about, when you think about hardening your heart when it comes to Yahweh, That's a pretty bold stand to take. Yes, it is. To tell Yahweh what you ain't going to do. <laughs> and what you ain't going to listen to. Because I feel a certain kind of way. My opinion is thus and thus. And Yahweh, I think we need to meet halfway. Really? 
Are we in a position to negotiate with the creator of all mankind? The creator of the universe. And let me just remind you who you're dealing with when you are saying, I don't see it that way. I don't feel like walking that way. I don't feel like following that way. As the scriptures gave indication of his majesty and his awesomeness and his power, just to give a few of his credentials. I marvel sometimes when I go down to Ocean View Beach or Chesapeake Beach or Virginia Beach Beach and my feet are allowed to walk in the sand. Yes. And been there in years, but I remember how the sand felt going going through the through my toes, through the crack of my toes and getting sand on my feet. And look at all this sand. All this sand. All this sand. I often think about the big gulp that you get from a uh, 7 Eleven. Anybody ever had one of them big gulps? <laughs> you know, if someone were to tell you that they would give you a million dollars if you could count the pebbles of sand in a large big gulp cup. <laughs> But they give you a week to do it. And they said, at the end of the week, I want you to tell me how many pebbles of sand that's in that big cup. And you had to count every individual pebble out of the sand in that cup. Do you think you could do it in a week? No. Now that's just a cup. Let's look at the East Coast and all the beaches on the East Coast. Let's look at all the sand. Let's look at the West Coast and all the beaches on the West Coast and let's look at all the sand. We couldn't do it in a lifetime. Now Yahweh says in his word, as the pebbles of sand are on the earth. Hmm. I can't wrap my head around this. So are the numbers of stars that he's created in the universe. Now, how many stars are we talking about? The word went on to say that they are innumerable. If we had a lifetime for a thousand upon a thousand upon thousands of years, we could not count all the pebbles of sand on the earth. And yet Yahweh's stars that he created, he knows every last one of them individually by name. Who are we dealing with? Hallelujah. And we're going to tell him what we ain't going to do? I don't see it that way. You know, Satan had an arrogance about himself. Which got him kicked out of heaven. Oh yeah. And like father, like children. <laughs> the enemy's kids emulate and simulate their daddy. Yeah, that's right. When you take on this arrogant attitude and you're not gonna follow Yahweh's word and you're gonna do what you wanna do, then you are following the attributes and the characteristics of your father. Mm -hmm. Your father, the devil. Yes. The word of Yahweh tells us, and I need to go back over some scriptures sometimes to just reinforce <coughs> where we are. I want you to pray for us. Second Timothy chapter four and verse three. Yes. We read it in your hearing many times. The word says on this wise. It says on this way. <coughs> uh, hello? For the word of Yahweh is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, Amen. piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow 
and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Yes, indeed. The word of Yahweh is living. Mm -hmm. It's not dead, it's living. That's right. Mm -hmm. And powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 4.12 piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The word of Yahweh will seek you out, find you, and the word of Yahweh will nail down where we need to be. Amen. The word of Yahweh will discern the very intents of your heart. Yeah. I thank Yahweh for his word, and I thank Yahweh for this thought today that we want to share with you, and I want you to pray for us today, that Yahweh will certainly meet us here. There is a lot to be said about the word. Hallelujah. You know, when I think about where we are today in scripture, and the attitudes and the mindsets that we have, individuals will find themselves in a place where we need to certainly be listening to the word of Yahweh and adhering to the word of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Amen. The time will come. come on. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That's right. Amen. But after their own lusts. Mm -hmm. Shall they heed to themselves yes, right. teachers having itching ears? Yes. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. They shall turn away their ears from the truth. Hallelujah. We read a few moments ago about this pathway, and we were told to walk therein. And their response to Yahweh was, we will not walk therein. Uh -oh. And shall be turned unto fables. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. That's right. You know, it's a beautiful thing when you think about an individual trying to follow Yahweh and trying to follow his precepts. And his ordinances, and, and, and the word is tough. The word, the, the word will clean us up and straighten us up. Mm -hmm. But when you are an individual looking for someone to tickle your ear, mm -hmm. to say exactly what you want them to say, <laughs> to set, to set in the assembly on a Sunday morning, still a bona fide sinner when you came and a bona fide sinner when you leave. That's right. And the word just goes off your back like water in one ear and out the other and takes no substance because what's coming from the pulpit is what you want to hear. And it's sad that we have ministers, shepherds who have taken on that responsibility to be teachers to tickle those itching ears. Yes. Yahweh is looking for those individuals now who would cry loud and who would spare not, who would lift their voice as a trumpet to show Yahweh's people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins. Isaiah 58 and 1 says, cry loud. And spare not. Amen. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Yes. And show my people their transgressions. That's right. And not only my people their transgressions, but also <coughs> the house of Jacob, mm -hmm. their sins. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, we're living in a time what we call a crooked and perverse generation. That's right. It was used in scripture oftentimes. Crooked and perverse generation. It is recorded in Matthew chapter 17 and then again in Luke chapter 9. 
that our Savior said to the, the Hebrews of, of his day, you are an unbelieving and perverted generation. Yes. This is a general description, certainly for this world today in which we live. Crooked. Hallelujah. You notice in verse 15 of that same passage is the Greek word scolios, mm -hmm. from which you get scolosis of the spine, right. a twisting, a, yeah, a, a curvature. Yes. It means to be bent. Yes. It means to be twisted. It means to be deviated from the standard. This is a generation of people who are twisted mm -hmm. in terms of truth and virtue. Mm -hmm. Truth now becomes passe. Uh, we've fallen into that big, that big pool of saying what the scriptures is just a history book. Mm -hmm. It's for those people who need somebody to worship and look up to. All right. This is the intellectual mind of the secular unbeliever who believes she or he got it in control. But the time will come when men will not do what? They don't want to hear it. They can't stomach it. And even now, more so in the day of Yahweh, as we see the, the day of Yahweh fastly approaching, yeah. People are veering away, falling away from the truth. Hallelujah. They leave in the truth. That's right. The Ruach and the Emet. Yeah. You're correct. But when I think about the word and as I look at these passages today, Yahweh says, stand in the ways mm -hmm. and see. And ask. Is anybody asking anymore? Amen. Is anybody stopping for a second to say to their shepherd, I hear what you're saying, but I don't see that in the scripture. Yeah. Oh my goodness. What you're saying sounds good, but I don't see that in the scriptures. How often do we hear for the wages of sin is what? Yeah. Death. That's right. But the gift of Yahweh is eternal life. Now, we can be living and doing all that we want to do in this world. And then on Sunday mornings, we pretend to be these righteous, upright believers whose lives are perverted and solved with the wages of sin, leading ourselves down death's road and never hearing those sermons that will get us back on the path which is the good way. Amen. You know, when I think about this path and where we are now, our lives right now are in jeopardy. Oh, yeah. yep. mm. Because it's critical that we understand each day of our life we are to pursue Yahweh's word with fervor, with urgency, with a commitment and with a desire and dedication that it is Yahweh's word and the obedience to his word that's going to get us out of here. Yeah. You know, when I think about all that we're going through, the word of Yahweh has given us a road map. Amen. And it's up to us to follow the road map. So many of us are listening to all kinds of different doctrinal teachings out there and have followed the way of Baal. <clears throat> Baal has arised that he's alive and well in the hearts of peoples and minds of people. And people are veering away from the word. Hallelujah. Influences are something that's not new. You know, it's easy to be influenced to follow the path of unrighteousness. Hallelujah. We have an excellent example at the bottom of the mountain of Sinai. Yahweh had delivered the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But so oftentimes we forget that not only did he bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, they were accompanied with by a mixed multitude. 
And there were some Egyptians mixed in with that crowd. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Their influence, that's right, their influence was so great that Apis became a reality again. They left that golden calf and that image in Egypt, at least we thought. But when times got rough, they could not see. They knew nothing about faith. They knew nothing about putting their confidence in Yahweh. They went on what they could see. So Yahweh gave them wonderful, phenomenal miracles, which they forgot. Yes. Part of the Red Sea. On both sides. We forget sometimes. Walked across the Red Sea on dry land. That's right. Not mud. Not mud. The land was dry. How do you have a dry highway in the middle of a, of a sea? They got dust on their shoes, on their feet, walking through the Red Sea. With a pillar of fire behind them. And you know, when you think about who Yahweh is, and <coughs> who tells you to stand as in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Are we asking for that old, that old time preaching, that old time teaching, that, that teaching that stepped on our toes, that teaching that preached the unadulterated word of Yahweh, the word that you hear from the word, not, not, not from how I feel and, and, and what I think will sound good today. Right. Mm. Time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. As I look around today and I'm listening to services on TV, right. services on the radio, uh -huh. services on the internet, mm -hmm. and I'm watching and listening, there yeah. are some shepherds out there doing a great job, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, in trying to give the, the truth of Yahweh the best that they know how. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there are some out there who are giving the word of Yahweh that's very fashionable for the day. The terms that they want to use, the words they want to interject, whatever the kick word is for the day. And one word everybody likes to use now, a corn word they like to use now is narrative. The narrative is. But well, Yahweh has no narrative. Yahweh said, my word is going out of my mouth and it would not do what? Return unto me void. Amen. Yahweh's word is not coming back. Not accomplishing what it's supposed to do. All right. But there is a way that seems right unto a man. Proverbs 14 and 12 says, There is a way oh, yeah. that seems right to a man, but it's in. Yeah. It leads to death. Amen. It leads to what? Yeah. Death. Death is something that none of us get a chance to negotiate with. If we knew what time we were going to die, exact, exact date, hour, minute, seconds that we will leave this earth, we will probably play all kind of strange life games up until that last minute to get our hearts right with Yahweh. But death is such that none of us know when that time is coming. Amen. Yahweh tells us, don't, don't let us, don't let him catch you with your works, what? Amen. Undone. And we're living in a time now where people are not concerned about their works anymore. They're living life as if there is no consequences after death. They've taken, they've taken that story. Yeah. They've taken his, his story, his story, that after death, you're done. You can ignore that stuff in the scriptures. That's just a whole lot of hoopla that somebody made up. It is sad, but Satan is, Satan is on a campaign right now to get as many into the fold of destruction because he already knows what his end is going to be. 
And people are not concerned about where they're going to spend eternity. Let me rephrase that. A lot of people are not concerned about where they're going to spend eternity. You know, I love the fact that Yahweh wants us to be wise. Wise in our decisions that we make for him. I am moved today because so much has been said about enduring sound doctrine. I listen to all of the excuses. All of the revelations that people supposedly have. Yahweh's word does not contradict itself. That's right. You know, the move, the move now that we have in the world and the world that's currently going forth, people say, well, if that person said Yahweh spoke to them and told them to carry the word and preach the word, and they happen to be a female, who am I to say that Yahweh didn't speak to them? This is part of the justification for many of these so-called women pastors and women preachers and teachers and using this term elder. You know, Yahweh's word is, is a document that you got to be careful that you don't mess with. That word pastor is the same word as shepherd. And shepherd has never been a feminine word in any culture. There is no such thing as a shepherdist. Now, I don't care about Cecil B. the Mills in the 1955 Ten Commandments where Charleston Heston comes upon these ladies playing Zepabora and her sisters and they were tending the flock. Now, Cecil B. the Mills did a great job with all the special effects in Ten Commandments. It was definitely ahead of its time. But in his history... In his preparation, he didn't read the scriptures too well. <clears throat> they were not tending no flock, and they were not any shepherds. Mm-hmm. But it's amazing, it's amazing to me that today everybody wants to preach and everybody wants to teach. Now, whether whether you're male or female, and you got a lot of these spineless Weak knee jelly back preachers who are giving into this mess. There is no scripture. There is no scripture for no female pastor. No female evangelist. No female apostle. When Yahshua chose the 12 apostles, I don't recall reading anywhere in there where he chose a female. Now, we, we cannot dilute the scriptures when we go back to creation and we go back to the order and the plan that Yahweh ordained in scripture. When Yahweh made man, he made man in his what? Now, Yahweh saw that man was lonely. And that man needed something. Yahweh chose to take a rib from man. He didn't make another rib. He pulled the rib that he'd already made from man. And he made woman. Now woman has been on woman has been on a journey for a long time. And woman has always desire from her mother, Eve. Now, I know the day that Pastor Eve may not be your favorite person to listen to, 
But that's okay. Because the scriptures are already in place and they say what they say. The word of Yahweh says Yahweh is the head of Yahshua. And Yahshua is the head of the church, of the assembly. And when he made man, he made man head over the woman. Now the feminist group mentality and the mindset well, that's that, that's that thinking from that culture. We use that term culture. Here, here are some of the cliche words that, that is thrown out. Man will not endure sound doctrine. Well, that was for that time. That was for that time. When did the time change? And when did the hierarchy of Yahweh's creation change? When did Yahweh say his woman was over man? Where did he say it in his scripture? See, 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 the difference is if you don't want to go with what Yahweh said, you want to go with what you said, then that's a problem. That's a problem. And for these spineless men, these henpecked men, who are married to, and I may, get in your, I may get in your business today, but I could care less. <laughs> and for these spineless, these spineless men who are weak, meek, and jellyback, I call them henpeck. Amen. Yes, dear this, and no dear that. Yes, dear this, and no dear that. And he followed down behind her with his head bent down. Yes, ma- yes dear, I'm coming. <laughs> That is what Yahweh ordained for man. Scripture has it already set up in the word how we should conduct and how the order, how the order should be established. Yahweh made man first, not woman first. And as I said before, keep in mind, Yahweh did not make any female angels. And you can't find one in the scripture. Now you can go to the occult world, you can go to witchcraft, you can go to voodoo. And remember when you go to voodoo and when you go to the witchcraft world and when you go to the occult world, these folk made this stuff up, not Yahweh. Yahweh never said witchcraft didn't exist because it's in scripture. He told his children stay away from it. The word of Yahweh says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, we give them names like demons or devils. They do exist. They're very real. The same gentleman that came to Yahshua possessed with all the devils. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua asked him, what is your name? Mm -hmm. And he came back with the reply, my name is Legion. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua rebuked all them devils out of that man and cast them into the swine that ran ran off the cliff. You know the the story. And you say, well, Pastor E, why are you on... Why you own women preachers today and women pastors and this and that and, and folk? Because this is the society and what we are caught up in. I don't care if the congregation has a congregation of 10,000. You're still 10,000 wrong. He said, well, this woman brought so many people to, uh, to the Lord, to Christ. Well, Yahweh will certainly honor his word. But that same individual and those individuals who walk in that capacity, they got an appointment one day. They're going to stand before Yahshua. And see, a whole lot of pastors and preachers would stand flat-footed like this and say this. See, I got a real strong back. And I don't need no back breaks because I read where you cry loud and you spare not. Hallelujah. 
Timothy, study to show thyself approved. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly divide the word of truth. When you rightly divide the word of truth, you say what's in the word. You don't add to it. You don't take away from it. You don't get some philosophical thought, well, you know, I believe the spirit came down and spoke to me. I believe the spirit came down. I believe the spirit did speak to you. I believe that. Now, whether or not it was the spirit of Yahweh, that's a different story. Because Yahweh don't contradict his word. Hallelujah. If the word says one thing and we do another, that's a problem. Yes, sure. yes. Yes, indeed. And then justification to try to say, well, this is why, this is why uh, women, women were given the opportunity to preach the word. Preach the word? Preach? Mm -hmm. Preach the word? Mm -hmm. You better look that word preach up again. Well, Deborah was a prophetess. Yes, she was. A prophetess is one who foretells. That's not a preacher. That's what they prophesied. In that day, say, if Yahweh, I'm going to pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. He didn't say preach. He said prophesy. And your young men shall dream dreams. Your old men shall see visions. And upon my servants and my handmaids, I'm going to pour out my spirit, saith Yahweh. And then folk got problem with Paul. Over there in Timothy where he declares, I suffer woman not to usurp the authority over the man. Suffer woman not to teach. Not to teach. Not to teach. Or usurp the authority over the man. And we find all, all kinds of sophisticated ways to try to get around that. And we come back, we, we come back with this hypothetical lie. Well, that was during that time, and this was going on, that was going on. That was for that narrative of that time. Man, get off that crap. Stop it. Stop trying to water, water Yahweh's word down. Stop it. It's an awkward situation. This woman up in the pulpit, she's stumping and huffing and puffing and screaming and hollering. Don't even look right. Something's wrong with that picture. She huffing and puffing and sweating. And a hug this and a hug that. Said nothing. Thank you. Hallelujah. Said absolutely nothing. And totally out of order. Totally out of order. Yahweh's word does not advocate this. And you know, whether it's friends, wife, cousins, loved ones, I don't care who it is. Sister, I don't care who it is. You tell me Yahweh called you to preach, I'm going to say, no, he didn't. I ain't worried about Sister Margaret coming to me telling me that mess. Because she know the word. She know the word. Husband said, well, honey, I, I don't know. <laughs> if you say he called you, who am I to say he didn't? <laughs> who are you to say he didn't? Take your weak knees and your, your spineless back and go pick that scripture up. And take it to your wife and show her and ask her to explain this particular verse to you. Because if you can stand up against the word of Yahweh, then you you, you, you something else. You something else. Will not endure sound doctrine. And, and, and the world that we live in right now, folk are departing from the truth. They don't want to hear this kind of preaching or teaching. That's, that's right. That's don't want to hear this. That's right. Don't want to hear what the word says. Yeah. This ain't Pastor E. Hallelujah. If you got passages in the scriptures where women can be pastors and apostles, you uh, bring them to me. The last time I looked, those who call themselves bishops. The scripture says, if a man if a man desireth the office of a bishop, 
let him, let him be the husband of one wife. That's what the scripture says. <laughs> now I know we got acronyms now that's supposed to be powerful and ministers are caving in, LBGTQ community. They're coming, they're coming out the church and they're coming out the pastors. We're going to lock you up because you ain't reading the scriptures right. So what scripture are you read? That's what my word said. <laughs> It didn't say if a woman slash man desired the office of a bishop. Right. Wait a minute now. Hold up. It didn't say she must be the wife of one husband. Right. Uh oh. And then we get into where we are now with <coughs> transgender. Bless y'all. Bless what is that? What is that? What is that? I wake up one morning and I decide that I want to be a woman. I came in the world with the physical attributes of a male. And one morning I wake up, I decide that I want to be a woman. And then we can allow now what men won't do with sound doctrines. Transgenders are now leading congregations. That's right. That's right. That's right. All the good news. The homosexual community. We don't. Somebody say, well, y'all always hopping on the homosexual. There's a whole lot of sin in the Bible. You, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Fornication, adultery, mm -hmm. top two. Mm -hmm. But isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing if homosexuality was so great? <laughs> Why did Yahweh destroy five cities? Mm -hmm. Oh, you only know about Sodom and Gomorrah, but there were three other ones mentioned over there in Genesis that got destroyed too. And along with those other five, there were surrounding barrows that also got destroyed. Then he comes back and revisited it again in the New Covenant. Somebody said, well, that was the Old Testament. What? Well, when we go to Romans, Yahweh lets you know that this is an abomination to him. Just like the fornicator and the adulterer are going to go to hell for <coughs> their sins, the homosexual are going to go to. There is no little sin and little small sin. Time will come when men will not endure what? Sound doctrine. Don't want to hear this. Pastor, pastor, listen. Listen, pastor, listen. We got folk in the congregation, pastor. Who's into this lifestyle? <laughs> pastor, listen. You need to calm that down, Pastor. <laughs> they're giving, they're giving all kind of money. Mm -hmm. They're the big, they're the big givers. <laughs> they're the big givers in the offering plate. Mm -hmm. And if Pastor got his eyes on the filthy Luca, mm -hmm. he watching that, he watching that, that, that offering plate. Yeah. Then Pastor Sermon may get tapered. Yes. He might back off the accelerator uh -huh. and put it on cruise. Yeah. A lot of ministers are cruising now up in the pulpit. Yeah. Sin seems to be a subject that's far in the far distance over there. Repent every one of you and be immersed in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach for the remission of your sins. And after this you shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKadah. What happened to that passage? I spoke a few Sundays ago. We can just confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. Here's a big lie. Here's the narrative. And we are saved. Where does it say that in the scripture? Mm. Thou shalt be. That's right. The rule of Hakadosh is no joke. It's not something we laugh at and we just pass by like it didn't happen. You better have that power on the day the Yahshua and Messiah return. You better have that power. Amen. You better have that indwelling of the spirit. Now, you go follow some he, some human, human, mm, that's right. some, some individual. People now, as the scripture says, worship the creature yeah. rather than who? The creator. Yahweh's yeah. yeah. put on the back burner. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how eloquent they speak. Yeah. 
I don't care how charismatic they may be. Mm -hmm. As long as what you are saying lines up with the word, I don't have no problem with you. When you step outside, the, when you step outside the word, and you tell me, well, the spirit came to me last night and spoke to me, gave me a revelation, and it said to me, "Tell him, woman, thou art loose." I don't have to call no names. This gentleman has made millions on that statement. And for those who didn't read it in scripture, loose from what? Thank you. <laughs> what you loose from? Oh. Go back and read the passage. Woman, thou art loose to do what? Mm -hmm. Well, you are loose now to move forward into the, the ministry. Mm -hmm. Is that what that scripture said? Mm -hmm. You want to become a bishop? Mm -hmm. You're loose. You want to become an apostle? You lose. <laughs> and let me tell you something. I don't care how many times I stick my hand across this pulpit and how big it is. How loud my voice may get or how deep the projection may get. Mounts to a hill of beans. Because what the word says, that's what settles it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What did Yahweh say? Hallelujah. I suffer a woman not mm -hmm. not, not. Oh, yes. to teach Amen. or usurp the authority oh, over the man. Yes. Oh, right. Right. Oh. Now I don't care how many ways you try to twist that scripture and carry it any way you want to carry it. Mm -hmm. You cannot you cannot disregard the fact in creation Yahweh made man first and he gave us he gave us the breakdown of the order in which creation and man and woman should act and respond exactly. in the world. Exactly. When a woman no longer wants to be under mm -hmm. her husband's authority, mm -hmm. now I know there are governing factors. And mm -hmm. This ain't for you to treat your wife like a slave, That's right. give demands and all this kind of crazy mess. There, the passage of scriptures is already in place. I don't have time to teach on husband and wife today. But the order and the plan from creation, Yahweh has already put down. We're, we're saying to him, Yahweh, I don't agree with that order. That's right. I'm telling you, Yahweh, that if I feel, this is what I'm saying, if I feel that I need to preach, then I need to preach. I need to teach. I need to be over congregation. I don't care what Paul said. I don't care what Peter said. Well, if you don't care what these brothers say, take the scriptures, put it down, and write your own scriptures. Because the Unadulterated word of Yahweh apparently means absolutely nothing to you. You're not going to obey it. You feel a certain kind of way. You feel? Do you do you do you do not know that Yahweh cares less about our feelings? Amen. Yahweh ain't concerned about our feelings or our opinions. Who are we who are we to tell him what we're going to do and what we ain't going to do? But why do you think the scripture? Why do you think the scripture was pinned? The day is going to come when man will not tolerate. I bet you this YouTube channel will get a whole lot of hits. Once they hear a little bit of the, in, once they hear a little bit of it, or, or there's another one. There's another one. <laughs> One, 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 one of them women preacher bash it, bashers, they, they just, just bashing, just bashing. Bashing what? <laughs> Yahweh's word is, Yahweh's word, see, see the truth is, 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 the truth. Is, the truth. Ha! 
Hallelujah. Scripture says they're going to leave it. Mm -hmm. They're going to leave it. They're going to depart from it. So if you leave in the truth, what you going to? Mm. There's only one. There's only one. Only one door you can go to. There were two doors. Mm -hmm. Just like light and darkness. Mm -hmm. The opposite of truth is a lie. Mm. And you think a lie is going to get you into heaven? Yeah. How you feel is going to get you into heaven? Mm. Listen. People are people are caught up in feelings. Mm. And Yahweh ain't concerned. Yahweh ain't concerned about our feelings. All right. You know, <laughs> when I look at the word of Yahweh and I think about the time in which we're living. Yahweh is so awesome. I want to read, I want to read this passage. Because just this illustrative view of Yahweh, who we're dealing with, I shake in my shoes when I read this. Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9 through 11. And it says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like, the, like that of pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand, thousand, thousands ministered unto him. And 10,000 times, 10,000 stood before him. That's right. The judgment was set. The books were open. That's right. I beheld, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain mm -hmm. and his body destroyed and given to the burning fire. Hallelujah. Who are we dealing with? When we tell Yahweh what we ain't going to do. How I feel. I believe he called me to ministry. You better check that out. You better check that out. I know a lot of, we, we need preachers. We need pastors. Want to appease people. Go along with the norm. Until you can show me in Yahweh's word where he called you to be a pastor <laughs> and an evangelist Hallelujah. and an apostle when he called you to do all, to do all these things when you can show that to me in scripture then I will certainly support that effort. Not until then I'm going to follow the truth. Hallelujah. 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 Man I want to hear this. He don't want to hear this. The word of Yahweh is clear. It's established. It's gone through the fire seven times. You're not going to challenge Yahweh's word. You're not going to pervert his word. Just go ahead and join that crooked and perverse generation and keep on, keep on rocking and rolling. Because your end is the end known as death. Mm -hmm. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man. Where it seems, it, it don't seem like it's no harm mm. for sister so-and-so to pastor this, this church or minister in that day or do this and do that. And why, pastor, are you on the women preachers and teachers today? You know why I'm on it? Because it's prevalent and it's raging and it has erupted in our society and it's being accepted by a lot of vulnerable people. And a lot of shepherds ain't teaching and telling people it's error. They are in error. They are in error. They have fallen away from the truth and gone into error. That's right. 
Y'all is good all the time. Yes, he is. Let's give him a praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all praise. Time is going to come. Not going to tolerate it. I don't want to hear Pastor Whitbury today. That's fine. Cut me off, shut me down, do whatever you want to do. Worthy Yahweh is still going to stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to have words of exaltation and our benediction from our ministering brothers, Minister Daniel Belcher and Elder Ronald Green. Let's, let's receive them with a hearty hallelujah. 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 They can come, they can come in at their own. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Giving honor to the spirit of Yahweh, thanking Yahweh for his word. Truly enjoy the message today. A message that is necessary. I believe it was written, it said, where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Said, so looked in the sea, says not me. It looked in the deep of the earth, it said, it ain't in me. You know. Wisdom of Yah is the word of Yahweh. Oh, yes. We must adhere to Yahweh's word. And if we stay with Yahweh's word, we'll be just fine. Yes. And with that, I'm going to pass the reins to Hallelujah. 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 As we go forth today, go in peace and love. Let the assembly say hallelujah. 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 Shalom. 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 Shalom.